I'm presenting information on the uh, HCRNGU 16260 trial, which is a trial of Nevo monotherapy with a Nevo IPI boost in treatment naive patients with metastatic clear cell cancer. And the clinical results of this study were published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology in April of last year. And what I'm presenting at this meeting is a correlative endpoint looking at treatment-free survival. And we know from immunotherapy studies that benefit can persist after treatment stops and that toxicity can sometimes persist for a while after treatment stops and that treatment-free survival is a novel endpoint that can describe um, that benefit and toxicity that happens after treatment stops. And we've looked at this in melanoma studies and kidney cancer studies previously, but they were all in studies where treatment only stopped because of toxicity or progression rather than a defined treatment endpoint. And so we wanted to look at this in the uh, HCRNGU 16260 study because we had a defined treatment endpoint that was around 96 weeks for either people on um, arm A, which is Nevo monotherapy and continued response, or those who progressed or had stable disease at um, 48 weeks, who then went on to the second part of the study, part B, uh, which got the Nevo IV boost. And so we did that. Uh, we looked at the information at a median follow-up of 37.7 months in 128 patients. And in order to make this interpretable, we counted the Part A and the Part B as one regimen. And so when we looked at overall response in that one regimen, adding up the responses in Part A and Part B, the overall response rate was 36%. 58% in favorable risk and 27% in the intermediate and poor risk patients and 68% of patients were alive and 38% of patients were alive and treatment free and everybody had stopped therapy. So we then looked at treatment free survival which we define as the area between the time from registration to the end of treatment and the time from registration to the starting of subsequent treatment. And if you look at a um, Kaplan-Meier curves for those a time to event endpoints, it's the area between those things. And overall, um, looking at 36 months of follow-up, we saw that there was an average 30 months of people alive. And of that 30 months, it was made up of by 11.5 months on therapy, 9.5 months treatment-free, and nine months on subsequent therapy. And when we broke it down by IMDC category, we saw that in the favorable risk population, um, the 99% of the time was spent alive and treatment-free survival was 12 and a half, 12.9 months. And 40% um, of the patients had completed the full amount of therapy. While in the uh, intermediate and poor risk patients, treatment-free survival was about 22% of the total period, 36-month period. Now, clearly favorable risk was doing better than intermediate and poor risk, but we used the benchmark, the nevo IPI arms of the Checkmate 214 study, 
and treatment tree survival in our study was superior for the favorable risk and the intermediate and poor risk compared to what was seen in the 214 study, highlighting the benefit of having a defined treatment endpoint. And so that's what we saw. What did that mean? Well, I think we are trying to propose treatment-free survival as a novel endpoint that gives important information about the ability of treatments to put people in remission. And that's something that I think patients want to know. And we're suggesting that this is something that adds value and could be added to future studies. And a point that I particularly want to make is once again, how well the favorable risk patients do justifying, at least in my opinion, there being a pure immunotherapy regimen approved for the favorable risk patients, which unfortunately at the moment is not the case.